Hello fellow old schoolers and welcome to the third match here where we are following my mono black brew as it struggles uh, through the Swiss in this tournament and uh, in this third round of the tournament I'm coming up against a living plane stack and it's uh, green obviously and red and also uh, black but the red and the black are kind of splashes it's mostly a green brew and um, We'll go over a bit uh, his deck here and then we'll have a, a picture of my mono black brew just for reference because I went over that in the previous games. And I'll put down a timestamp below so you can just go to that particular timestamp if these deck techs are not your thing. This is the Living Plains deck. I don't have a deck picture of it but we can just go over it real quick here. The Living Plains uh, is like this. It makes every land in play into a 1-1 creature and those lands will have summoning sickness once you play them. So that's the core of his deck and then he'll have a bunch of cards to just try to crack the other guy out of um, his mana. He can use uh, fireballs for that with a splash of red and also uh, pyrotechnics um, because with pyrotechnics you can just uh, divide four points of damage any way you want. So you'll just divide one uh, out each uh, to each lane and just crack four lanes in one spell. Triskillians also works well in this brew. Uh, because he will, uh, yeah, you can just play that and it'll take down three lanes immediately, just shooting those lanes uh, down with its guns. And um, he also plays with Ad Asnot's Altar. Um, the thing with that is that you can sacrifice a creature to it for two points uh, of two colorless mana. So he can actually um, tap for one mana and then he can sack a lane for two additional mana. So that's triple mana. And he can just. Uh, do that with uh, some of his lands and then just fireball the other guy out with a huge fireball. It's like two mana flares, uh, so it's like an all-in punch. Uh, we actually saw a similar brew um, way back in the Long Island Cup 1.0, I think it was, I seem to remember, with a guy that played with the Nicol Bolas and uh, Living Plains and Astro Altus as well. Pretty damn spicy. This one is a bit harder, this deck, it, there's no, there are no Nicol Bolas here. It's mostly uh, a combo deck, a green combo deck revolving around that uh, living plains. And he'll have uh, mana creatures as well, like Lana Wells and Birds of Paradise, uh, to keep access to his own mana, uh, Moxen as well, uh, I, I guess, uh, because uh, the lanes will just uh, destroy each other in huge fights when, when all lanes are creatures. And uh, yeah, he'll, he can just uh, survive with his mana creatures and getting his stuff out. Um, I think that's about it. Sometimes these guys will play with a basil, uh, with a basilisk, and with a lure, and you can just attack and uh, destroy all the other guys' uh, lands because they have to block. Uh, people did that back in the day, but then uh, people realized that you can just tap your lands as a fast effect for mana, and as you don't get mana burn, uh, the basilisk uh, can't lure them in and destroy them all. So I don't think he has brought that in here. It's kind of a, an obsolete tech for this. Now people use red for uh, uh, pyrotechnics and uh, fireballs and stuff like that. The black in there is usually just for the uh, black power cards like Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, that is uh, the brew we're coming up against here. A green combo deck uh, with a splash of red, red and black. This is my mono black brew, primarily an acro deck, I suppose, or mid-range deck. We've gone over it before. It has some combinations in it with the drain life into greed. We have a royal assassin with icy manipulators and paralyze. After sideboard, we can put in the terrors and the sushis if we want to. And four underworld dreams that will provide us with some burn effect for this deck. No draw engine. I'm playing mono black because I want to win a play mat. So. Uh, we don't have any power so apart from that uh, black mox and the black lotus that aren't really that crucial in this brew That's about it. This is the matchup Living Plains facing off against the army of darkness big bad boogie the mono black brew And we have the living plains player on the left here on that friendship is magic uh, My little pony play mat needs to turn them so I can have a good look at all his little pony friends here. He's on the play. And we see he has mulliganed here and so have I. So both players going down to six cards here in a bit. Oh scratch that, I'm mulliganing down to five here, that's pretty damn brutal. Oh and he has a library of Alexandria 
turn one here. I better get an answer pretty soon. Yeah, he's now up, uh, saving up for to be able to draw with it. At least he starts with six cards, so um, after playing it, he'll only be at five. So it'll take a while. Let's see if is it okay? There's a sinkhole here. I think no tutor. Hmm. I suppose we uh, several lines of play here. We don't have have any power, but we could just tutor for strip mine or sinkhole, or we could tutor for mine twist, just to kind of punch him <laughs> out of library range. But he came within library range here. Ahead of a few cards at this point because I mulligan down to five. Pretty annoying that I have to mulligan so much when it's monocolored. That's not usually the thing. Uh, you should be mana fixed. Okay, now there's a sinkhole. I might have tutored for that. I, I can't remember. Getting a factory down as well. So a factory on each side. He has a full hand though. I'm down to four cards, I think, or five. But he has kept some lands in hand. So he is behind in mana drops here. Bayou coming down. And a tutor from him. All right, we'll cut a bit forward while he searches through that deck for whatever he wants. Passing the turn, third swamp here. That's an Underworld Dreams, okay. Let's not hope that he tutored for a Sylvan Library. <laughs> it would shut that down immediately. Now he draws. Let's see what he, what he picked here. Mind twist, I likely tutored for that, right? I'm mind twisting my hand for two. I get to keep a single card. Ah, oh, another Underworld Dreams. That would have been nice to uh, have in, in the back here. Another factory, though. Oh, coming over and pumping the uh, the factory with the recently dropped factory. I think that was the last card I kept. So I'm decidedly without steam at this point after a double mulligan and a mind twist. But we do have an Underworld Dreams on him and a couple of factories out here. He has two defending factories though. Oh, scratch that. Only one left. Sink holding one of them. Okay, yeah, he makes a trick here. So he activates the other factory and pumps it. So it's a 3-3 three, three, and he can make it into a 4-4. Four, four. No, because I, actually I, I cracked the one uh, without summoning sickness. So he can't pump itself. So we can trade here. Yeah, because... That the surviving factory had summoning sickness, so it was only a 3-3. Three, three. Otherwise, he could have pumped himself to a 4-4. Four, four. Getting down. No, he still has a factory. Attacking with the elf, uh, just for good measure. He doesn't want to block with it. He can't cast anything with it, so why not just come over? Oh, I'm paralyzing it. <laughs> okay, really pressuring his mana early here. The more time this takes, the better for me. Uh, at least he keeps my factory back with his defending factory. Um... Yeah, but he should take damage from that Underworld Dreams. Uh, so I'm just buying time here. He has a full hand. I don't want him to get anything out. Do some gin here. Uh, so trying to pressure his mana with sinkholes and paralyzing his mana creatures here. Uh, just to hold him back a few turns. I don't want him getting something huge out. Esnot's Altar here. Yeah, that's a, a really nice uh, with Living Plains. And when he played that, I... I knew he was on the Living Plains because, yeah, well, it looks like it, right? Dusum Jin coming over here, putting him down to seven as a Spectra follow up here. Yeah, it's looking rather grim for him. It looks great for the Mono Black deck here. Uh, Underworld Dreams pinging him one more time. And it also it blocks any Sylvan Library plays here. I think he has a Living Plains in hand. I think he has. I uh, um, wonder if he'll play it. Also a blazing effigy, but no red mana to cast it. So he is under a lot of pressure here. I mean, he could block the Jusum Jin, I suppose, with the factory, but still. Okay. Pass the turn back to Mono Black here. Jusum Jin gets ready for another swing, and now the factory comes over again because I know he'll block the, the Jusum Jin now. Uh, so the factory can get in. If he doesn't block the Jusum Jin, he's dead. Okay, so nicking a forest with the Hypnotic Spectre, he blocks the Jusum Jin and getting in for four. 
So putting him down to two points of life here and playing, getting him down to one point of life with the Underworld Dreams here. Yeah, okay, Mono Black takes the first one. I only had an, uh, a Dark Red Chill in hand. Um, it, pretty brutal that he, I was out of steam with this, but I made it work. Uh, kind of just overwhelmed him. And that, that's, just, that's what Mono Black can do sometimes. Um, just the, the creatures are really good. Um, you don't have a lot of good removal, but you have a lot of good creatures. So, uh, yeah, overwhelmed him before he could get his combination out. Now we have sideboarded a bit here. Uh, I think we saw him put in a, a Tranquility right there and a Disrupting Scepter and the, uh, something else here. That was a Hurricane against the Spectres and Sink of Empires and a Juggernaut coming in here, likely to block or maybe put pressure on Juzum Jins. He can't block with it because it has to attack. And he knows I don't have much of a draw engine, so that Disrupting Scepter will be brutal, also because I can't remove the Disrupting Scepter. So that's pretty nice. We can also see what he takes out here. Um, and I think, personally, I'll likely take in some, the, the Sushis, actually. Uh, I need as much uh, creature power as I can get my hands on, because I need to take him out before uh, he gets his Living Plains combination up and running. Uh, because I don't have any artifact mana, so it will just really just destroy me. So uh, yeah, I need to finish the game and overwhelm with creatures as fast like as I can. I think I'm keeping the Underworld Dreams in also as another way just to ping him and to lock him out of those Sylvan libraries if he pay, if he plays with them. Uh, I don't know what I'll take out. Maybe paralyze. We shall see. This is round number two. And Thomas on that living plane stick, well, he will be on the play um, for a second time here. And what a play it is, starting out with a Library of Alexandria turn one here. At least we have sinkholes. Um, that's always nice. Oh, and a black mox, but no sinkhole, that's a black knight. Coming out, turn one here, we'll put some pressure on, but he'll start drawing with that library. Forest into a Lanawar Elf here. Now he will try to get that uh, non-land mana up, getting some ramp here. Black Knight comes galloping over, Ooh. hitting him with a sword, and there's a Hypnotic Spectre ghost follow-up here and a factory, so a lot of it's almost like an aggro opening against an active library here. So he needs to read fast here, uh, just in order to keep, uh, to get into the game. And uh, at some point he'll have to empty some cards from that hand just to stay alive because I'm really putting pressure on him here. Okay, getting a Chaos Orb. Yeah, and immediately Chaos Orb in the Spectre. He needs to do that because if it gets in, he'll have to discard cards and it hits here. Yeah, otherwise the Hypnotic Gaze from that Ghost will keep him out, keep him out of library range uh, pretty soon. So only the Black Knight comes in here, putting him down to 16 points of life. No Factory on the visit here. Could have done that, he was tapped out. Oh, but I'm using it to play something. Ooh, a Sinker Vampire here. Yeah. I'm really trying to just overwhelm him before that library um, has become uh, uh, too powerful, before his card advantage becomes too uh, un unmanageable for me. So Sink of Empire is a good way to start. He drew into a mountain here. As said in the deck tech, he splashes a bit of red here. He can't fireball for four yet. He has an ice storm in hand. I suppose he could ice storm the factory. Okay, yeah, he does so here. Factory goes down, but still a lot of attackers here. Coming in for six. Putting him down to 10 points of life. Oh, even more creatures. No, this is an Underworld Dreams. It'll actually put the herd on him for using that library. And he is at half point here. Um, going down to 9 points of life. Taking another point of damage here from the library. Going down to 8. Really scrambling for an answer here. If you had a fireball, you could fireball for 4. It's, it's that Singular Vampire. It's too much damage. He can't, he can't ignore it. a Trisk regrow thing. The Chaos Orb. Okay, good good stuff here. Oh, activating the Chaos Orb. Likely on the Sink of Empire. Let's see if it hits here. Slow motion. Oh, it's a hit. 
as said, Thomas is one of the old guards in the old school scene in Denmark, so he's been flipping a lot of orbs in his time. Uh, and it shows here, really. Uh, oh, but that's another under with dreams. He, he can't regrowth that orb uh, again. So he takes two points of damage each time he draws for the library. I suppose that shuts it down. He needs an answer here next turn. That's the knight will get in for two, and the next draw step will kill him. I suppose he could draw. He has a fireball. Suppose he could fireball the knight. He has to do that, right? No, first on a trisk, even better. Okay, so that's a solution for the black knight here. But those honorable dreams, man, they'll be crucial against him. He needs a tranquility. Now, just cracking his mountain. I don't mind him keeping his library here, as he can't draw with it with two honorable dreams against him. And at four point of life, sushi coming down here. So he needs a tranquility in his next draw step. And here he goes. He draws again with the library. Four points of damage from the Underworld Dreams. That's game. <laughs> Just suiciding with his own library. Uh, yeah, but if he didn't get a, a tranquility, I mean, he could survive the next attack step, but he would draw, He would die out in his uh, in his draw step. So, Mono Black takes this one. Uh, the second round here. I think we're showing some sideboard options. Took in a tranquility, I took in the hurricane. Took in the Pestilence and the Sushis, obviously. The Pestilence against all the mana creatures, I suppose. Um, yeah, uh, just to uh, ping them. Oh, and also because he plays with Living Lanes, actually. Uh, so, uh, Pestilence would be... I mean, it would crush us both, but um, still, uh, it would be fine uh, just to have it uh, as an equalizer after a Living Plane. Just to destroy everything. Okay, so Mono Black takes this game two to zero. So we're up two to one overall. We'll keep it rolling here with a bit more of my games before, because I don't have access to um, the content on the other cameras yet. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.